Today we're going to play Apex Legends Mobile on the Poco X2 Pro, check its battery usage, temperature, and most importantly, analyze the FPS throughout the match to see which one is the best setting. Let's dive in. Selamat pagi! Good morning everyone, Kenneth here and welcome to my tech series where instead of talking about earbuds, I'm gonna talk about, you know, everyday tech. And today, I'm going to tell you my experience spending a week's worth of time playing Apex Legends now that they are finally available in my country. We'll go straight to the game footage and I'll leave my thoughts afterwards, so let's get started from the low setting. Before we start the game, I'm currently sitting at 62% battery with brightness maxed out manually, and for the low setting here, I'll put the image quality to smooth and frame rate to balance. I won't be making any other adjustments, adaptive smoothing is turned off, anti-aliasing is turned on, as well as dynamic shadows, those are turned on. And keep in mind, this will be the same for the rest of the video. The only thing I'm gonna change is the image quality and the frame rate. So as the game loads here, the Poco X2 Pro is currently sitting at about 37 degrees on the screen side and 36 degrees on the back side. I consider this as cool to the touch and we'll see how hot it gets at the end of the match. All right, let's get to the first jumping sequence and here we can see a quick dip into 16 frames per second caused by the loading process of the surrounding assets. It's a very brief period, like one to two seconds, not that big of a deal, but keep this in mind as we move on to higher settings later on. During the match, I could say overall we got a solid 30 frames per second gameplay. I've rotated through different locations on a map, engaged in multiple combats, even during a pretty intense one, the FPS meter on a MIUI's frame rate monitor tool never shown anything lower than 28 frames per second. Now, if you notice the temperature on that monitoring tool rise to around 50 degrees Celsius, Fear not, because that's not what you feel on the outside. As you can see at the end of the match, the temperature reading is at around 43 degrees on the screen side and about 42 degrees on the back side. This level of heat is very manageable. I think you will be able to play for long without bumping into much issues. And the setting lives up to its name. It is a smooth 30 FPS gameplay that works, but doesn't offer much in terms of graphical quality. Shadows are practically non-existent and, you know, textures are just there so you can see, oh, generally what character is that. But personally, this is the setting that I would pick because one, it gives a stable FPS, and two, the phone doesn't get too hot, which means I could play for longer. By the way, at the end of the match, the battery is at 55% and I was playing for about 18 minutes, so 7% battery decrease not too shabby. Moving on to the next setting, here we have what I call the medium preset where we're finally using the recommended balanced image quality with frame rate set on high, which is 40 frames per second. The rest of the settings are kept intact and the battery is still at the same 55% but I've let the phone cool down here. So we're back at around 33 degrees on the screen and back and the room temperature was around 29 to 30 degrees, which is a sunny day without AC, just trying to save my electricity bill here. But let's start the game right now. So during the first jumping sequence, watch carefully as the FPS dropped from 40 down to nine frames per second. You can't miss the choppiness during that brief period. It still lasts only about two seconds. So fortunately it doesn't last too long. And during the match, the phone actually keeps up pretty well, averaging at 40 FPS most of the time, only when I engage in a combat with the enemy bloodhound used his scan ability, the animation dropped to 30 FPS for one second there. At the end of this 20 minutes match, we're down to 46 batteries, so 9% battery usage, which is about in line with our previous result, only that I played for a little bit longer. And temperature wise, we're looking at 43 degrees on the screen with 41 degrees on the back. Again, pretty much the same result as we got before. So generally, this is another safe setting to play on if you don't mind the rare dips during the craziest encounters. It's called recommended settings for a reason, but yeah, the difference is not mind blowing compared to the low setting as well. Okay, now for the high setting, I'm going to set the image quality to HD and also bump the frame rate to ultra. This should be interesting now as we're pushing 50 FPS and I've cooled the phone again just to give a fresh start. So we're looking at 35 degrees on the screen and 34 degrees on the back. Battery level is now at 44%. Now take a close look at this jumping sequence because the moment everything loads, the frame rate dips to just five frames per second and it lasts longer compared to the previous two settings. 
about three seconds here. I would say we're starting to see the limits of Snapdragon 860 on the Poco X3 Pro here. With that said, I think generally the whole match is still a pretty smooth 50 FPS gameplay with considerably better graphics, especially when it comes to texture resolution and shadow detail, but I'm seeing more frequent dips to 40, 45 FPS even during a normal combat when there's no special effect in play. So at the end of this rather short 16 minutes match, we're down to 37% battery, which is a 7% decrease. So we're starting to see more battery consumed for a slightly shorter gameplay here. Temperatures hover at around 43 on the screen and 41 on the back, which at this point we can confirm that no matter the setting, this is the temperature that you should expect when playing with the Poco X2 Pro for about 20 minutes of time. So the next question is, will the temperature increase further if we play longer? And if so, how hot will it get? To answer that question, I've done a stress test scenario where I put the frame rate on extremely high, so we're playing at 60 FPS now, but I want to keep the phone somewhat balanced, so I've dialed back the image quality to smooth, and I've played for about 40 minutes here. This time, I wanted to start off real fresh, so I fully charged the battery, though apparently I've used 1% already, so it's at 99%. But the temps are cool at around 36 degrees on both the front and back. Again, the rest of the settings are left unchanged like before. And the room temperature is about 29 to 30 degrees. So how did it go? Well, starting off from the jumping sequence, the frame rate already dips to four frames per second on a cold phone, which is even lower than my previous high setting. And we can see how even on smooth image quality, this still hits hard on the chip. I didn't get much footage from the first 20 minutes of gameplay because my kid is crying. So I was playing while holding him like this, but I did take a temp reading at the end of the match. And just as expected, we got around 43 degrees on the front and 41 degrees in the back. No surprises here. It was a 19 minutes match that somehow consumed only 7%. So we're down to 92% battery now. And surprisingly, the gameplay is pretty smooth. But keep in mind, it's not a rock solid 60 FPS. I've experienced many dips during normal combats, just like the high setting, but we all know that already. What we haven't tried is, if we start another game on this warm 43 degree phone, how hot will it get? So starting from the first jumping sequence now, because the phone is quite warm, we're getting a slightly lower 3 FPS reading. And honestly, it starts to get annoying because it's getting hard to pinpoint where I want to land. As you can see here, I crashed onto a structure and basically wasted some time falling to the ground. As I kept on playing, we got into a situation outside the ring, which I realized is pretty good for our stress testing because there are more things going on screen. But basically, the phone would fluctuate anywhere between 50 to 60 FPS. And when things get rough, it could go as low as 40 frames per second, which I've seen when using Gibraltar shield during combat outside the ring kills FPS. So at the end of this stress test, we're sitting at 82% battery, which is a 9% decrease from the start of the second game. And for the temperatures, actually the phone got even warmer at about 44 to 45 degrees all around with the top of the screen being the hottest point at 46.6 degrees. I still don't think it's super hot, but it's definitely very warm and I wouldn't want to play like that for long. So what is the best setting to play Apex Legends on Poco X3 Pro? As usual, the answer depends on your priority. But personally, I want a stable frame rate and I want to play longer on a cooler phone. Even when it is only 30 FPS, it is enough and I would take the low setting any day of the week. The recommended mid setting is also all right if you want a middle ground, but I really don't recommend using anything above it. The 60 FPS frame rate, if you are just playing one game and that's it, it'll be okay, but any longer and you will run into heat and frame rate issues very quickly. Also keep in mind that this game is at basically close beta right now, but I think they're testing the online gameplay to see if the servers can take it more than the game engine themselves. So this test will be a pretty good indicator of what it will come when the game is actually released for public later on. So what's your personal best setting? Let me know down in the comments below and also check out my other video where I play other popular games, including Genshin Impact on the Poco X2 Pro. But anyway, hit the thumbs up if you found this video at least entertaining and thank you so much for watching until the end. I'm Kenneth and I'll see See you in the next one. Bye. Come on, last one, last one. Bye one, bye one, come on. Oh, <laughs> oh gila, gila.